Have you checked the children? <laughs> Long days and pleasant nights, fellow travelers along the path of the beam. I am known on this level of the tower as Jaime in Fuego, and if you please you join me here for a bit of palaver on Halo to Stephen Kern. That's right, my man, El Rey, as I so affectionately call him, and obviously, welcome to the horror show. Uh, this is your weekly worship that you get every single Saturday from me here on our YouTube channel, and uh, yes, the king is my favorite author. You can see from all of those tomes that are behind me, which I uh, spent a seven plus year journey reading all of, but uh, we do sometimes veer into not just talking about the books, but the adaptations, which uh, is actually a proper time for me to plug the fact that for the Phoenix FearCon currently, which is running now through December 31st, uh, phoenixfearcon.com, I believe it is, you can actually check out a panel that myself, um, Mike's book reviews, Blue Gilland, uh, Lou Sitzma, and uh, uh, Sarah Wagstaff uh, all got together and talked about all of the different, uh, like, best and worst and everything in between adaptations of The King on screen. It was a very fun panel to put together. And uh, yes, so you guys can check that out um, sometime early next year. It will be available here on our personal YouTube channel. But at least for now, that's where the exclusivity is. And uh, honestly, an adaptation that I am hopeful gets a lot more just attention and proper recognition just hit a bigger platform this past week, and that's none other than Mr. Mercedes. Yeah, based on the Psy King book, the first in the Bill Hodges trilogy, but um, there were three seasons of the show. Only the first two are available currently, but they are on a new streaming service that is called Peacock. You know, like, that's kind of a weird-ass name. Well, yeah, it's because it's affiliated with uh, NBC Universal, and you know how, like, that little, that little bird is their logo? Yeah, so hence the name Peacock, but there's a lot of speculation they're going to rebrand that name and so on and so forth. But um, so still, the fact that you can watch the entire first season absolutely free. Yes, there are commercials, but I think you can sign up for like a seven-day trial or 30-day trial or something of that nature. And uh, hopefully a lot more people will check out the show that was originally on the AT&T Audience Network, uh, which was like a partnership between DirecTV and uh, AT&T, the, you know, the mobile and like phone provider and stuff like that. So since it was such a small niche little spot for this to land at for whatever reason, very few people got to see it. Now, I have the physical copy, but unfortunately that's all that it is. There's no bonus features, nothing of that sort, but you know, being a collector of media and loving, you know, just having a physical and tangible thing to hold on to. Um, I was a big fan of this series. I didn't get around to doing seasons two and three, but, but I did pick them up. So I had watched this when it was initially being broadcast back in 2017. I think I even signed up for like direct TV now or something because that was one of the only ways that I was going to be able to watch it. Uh, so I, I checked it out and I enjoyed it, but since uh, I ended up pulling the proverbial plug, so to speak, and just switching to exclusively streaming services, I did not watch seasons two or three, although I did recently pick them up on DVD. So uh, yeah, I was like, eh, time to revisit this series and an amazing performance, <laughs> performance <laughs> from none other than uh, Mr. Brendan Gleeson. He, it's, it's so funny because King did not write Bill Hodges as being an Irish dude, but Brendan Gleeson, he's from a wonderful family of actors. I mean, Domino's son and there's, you know, various others, but uh, yeah. He owns this role as Hodges, our uh, disgruntled former, uh, you know, police detective turned private investigator, and he owns it as an Irishman. Yeah, and I will forever think of uh, Hodges as being such. So, I mean, the, the performance is great. It's interesting, though, and as I just kind of peruse a few of my notes upon the, the revisit, um, this was developed by David E. Kelly, most of the episodes, if not all, if I'm not mistaken, uh, directed by Jack Bender. And uh, there is, um, I think David E. Kelly was, uh, what, Ally McBeal? And uh, whatever. Um, very celebrated television developer guy, and I believe it was this same team that actually worked on uh, HBO's The Outsider, which 
being a you know prestigious platform like HBO actually got a shit ton of just recognition and acclaim and all that other stuff, which I think could have been afforded to a show like this because not only is Gleason great in the role of our main character and a, a slightly darker take, a little bit cagier of a tank, if you ask me. He's a little bit more of a bastard, and, and you know, especially with, like, you know, the drinking whiskey the whole time and all this other stuff, but um, also Harry Tridaway, who a lot of people know from uh, playing uh, Dr. Frankenstein in Penny Dreadful, but he's terrific as Brady Hartsfield, our main villain and antagonist of this. So, like, just a few notes. I mean, there's, there's amusing stuff that is both added, um, interesting omissions, and also some stuff that they added that didn't necessarily work for me. I'll, I'll definitely, you know, give them that. So, um, there's fun Easter eggs, like the fact that he has a pet tortoise, turtle tortoise. I know there's a difference, but, you know, for, for anybody um, to, to this, like, deep tower junkie sort of status like myself, you will properly appreciate that. Um, what else? The Brady rocking to Pet Cemetery in, uh, in in the opening pilot episode and stuff. And so, yes, it being that Ramon song and everything, that's a cool little nod to, you know, like more hardcore fans and stuff. But he's actually rocking like the 80s, like super aggro, anti-establishment punk rock for the predominance of the series. Like, that's what he's always, you know, when he's down in his basement and he's working on, you know, like thing one and thing two and just being, being a little slimer, that yeah, he's always just just rocking hard on that sort of stuff. So it was a very it was a very deliberate decision because I did. It's been a few years now since I've revisited Mr. Mercedes. I've read it like three or four times at this point. It's a very solid King read, but it's not like an absolute absolute favorite. But Finders Keepers is amazing. Really looking forward to seeing what they do with the third season, adapting that second book, and you know once I finally get around to it. And I will be doing reviews of both seasons two and three for this, so stay tuned there. But uh, yeah, I mean the fact that he's like so into the into the punk rocky stuff, I found I found that to be uh, you know just just an interesting decision on the people who developed the show's part. Um, what else? The okay, have to say so he being Mr. Hodges and uh, King living a little vicariously, perhaps, as uh, I have always joked about with regards to this story. Now, uh, the stuff with Janie and uh, Mary, Mary Lewis Parker, I think her name is, and, and anyway, it's the main, it's the main girl from Weeds, and I didn't really like as much what they did with her character in this, I'll be honest, and for whatever reason, they do this, like, little balance thing of him hooking up with the younger woman, you know, who's still, like, in her 40s, obviously, you know, and King living vicariously, as I said, but um, they add this potential love interest neighbor who propositions him in the very first episode about getting down on the bang down, and just the the addition of her character, because she's not in the book, and this isn't like book comparison time or anything, I always try to mention that it's a, a different level of the tower, a different turn of the wheel, you know, uh, always with interpretations, you have to kind of just give them their due and try to be respectful and not comparative and everything, but her character seems very flippant and like just kind of pointless. I, eh, I don't know. I don't know. There's just something about that neighborly dynamic and, you know, she's widowed and Hodges is divorced and, you know, that and, and that's some other stuff that they do. They expand significantly on the role of his daughter and her having a troubled past and, you know, substance and alcohol abuse and all this other stuff and so there is like there's some stuff that is compellingly expanded upon like the stuff with the daughter those scenes they hit very just poignantly and profoundly and I also have to say some of the expansion on Brady's character but most notably his mother and some of the backstory stuff with her and you know her drinking craziness and just being at home all the time and not doing anything with her life and stuff, you know, and just all of the grief that, uh, you know, stemmed from the loss of his younger sibling and, you know, in turn, the loss of, you know, his father and so on. But they, they do something interesting with Brady in this, and some may like it and some may not, but I feel like they humanize him a little bit. They, they really do. I mean, he's pretty much, there's no shade of gray in that Hodges, uh, in, in, in the Hodges trilogy. He is like evil incarnate, and rightfully so, with the fact that he takes a Mercedes that he has stolen and 
He's wearing a condo and a mask and he is turned on as he's just running through just, I, I mean, helpless and obviously impoverished people who are just trying to find work in the early hours of the morning and he kills like 16 of them. So it's, it's a horrible scenario and that bit is done rather brutally and very effectively. So, you know, props to the fact that on this audience network, and I don't think they're censoring anything on Peacock because, I mean, I watched the, uh, oh goodness, the Brave New World show that I really enjoyed. If you, uh, you know, check out the, the Peacock TV for the Mr. Mercedes and you have some extra time, definitely at least give a couple episodes of Brave New World a shot because it was a very, very solid reimagining. You could tell they spent some money on it and it was really well done and uh, also very R-rated, so, you know, give them that content. Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, I I, I was uh, impressed and, and appalled at how they handle that very pivotal opening scene that sets the stage for pretty much all of the nastiness that follows. Um, I also liked how they went the more tech-centric with uh, Brady's antagonism in the fact that he's not just sending him letters, which, yes, he does get around to doing. And you also have to remember that um, this is, like, in the, the first Obama presidency. And so we're like, it basically revisits a country that was in the midst of a recession after a nasty market crash and all of this different stuff. So there is just, it's, it's a nation on edge and a nation very worried. And this is like smaller town Ohio that this takes place. And so it's just, it's, it's a troubling snapshot and you can, it, I mean, it's a very compelling time to, you know, choose to tell this tale. So that's something else that they all, uh, you know, and, and, and it's well shot. I mean, it's a damn good looking show. You can tell that they spent money on this, but um, yeah, the fact that Brady is sending him like these disappearing video links and just very graphic in nature. <laughs> so yeah, he does, I mean, eventually get to physical letters like in the book, but yeah, it's, effective the way he goes after Hodges it really really is and then with this combination of that footage from the him actually running people over in that proverbial Mercedes to you know some animation and all, all this different stuff it's really really nasty crazy stuff um what else we got here so uh, uh Brady filming the killing drive yeah we talked about that already um there's there's also expandedness to what, whereas I felt like humanizing Brady to the slightest degree and making him seem like he's a nasty shade of gray, obviously, but, you know, a little more pathetic and more like a person, I felt was compelling and also some of the expanded stuff with the mother. Some stuff that didn't work for me was like Lou, his friend at, uh, at the store, basically all of the stuff with his work, especially with a potential promotion and like his snively porn watching boss and stuff like I guess all of their performances the two that I mentioned specifically they're good but in in a lot of ways I felt like the additional screen time that we got for characters like that I didn't get as much Jerome as I wanted I didn't get as much Holly as I wanted and yes just like in the book Holly doesn't show up until about halfway through I think her first episode is uh, the sixth one uh, when you're dealing with the aftermath of uh, a certain loved one's funeral and so on and so forth but um, obviously a very very different turn of that proverbial wheel than the now iconic performance that we got from the outsider uh, with the girl from bad times at the El Royale a terrific actress this this girl was a little bit more at least as far as mannerisms and behavior uh, very much like Holly Gibney the one that has now been in five different Stephen King stories you know and became a very pivotal part of the Bill Hodges trilogy especially and then uh, I mean great performance on The Outsider but by the time you you get reacquainted with Holly Gibney and The Outsider if you've read all of the Hodges trilogy beforehand you you're not aware of the arc okay because yes you're like okay she loves movies she's a little eccentric so on and so forth but the fact that she has such an arc in that original Hodges trilogy and the fact that she comes out of her shell you know and the fact that she just really and she, 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 well, uncaged is really a, a, a good way of putting it because she's so reserved initially and those eccentricities and everything and the neuroticisms and stuff and she just becomes more confident and just she hones her prowess especially as, they, you know, in later uh, you know, books and seasons of the show as I'm assuming we'll see um, 
But I always envisioned Holly as being a lot less attractive than both of the actresses that have played her because they're both very beautiful and I, she was always more plain and homely and wormy and, you know, just putting on, as, as Lady Catherine was saying while she was watching it with me, it's like, just because you put this very homely, like, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, like, ankle dress on a woman who's like, I'm 31 and a half, and so on, that, you still can't deny the fact that she's, that she's attractive and, you know, a, a good looking girl, and so I, I've always, at least in my head, Holly Gibney is like, short hair, like mousy glasses, so on and so forth. I'm trying to remember if she actually has glasses in the books or not, and that's just an oversight for me not having that info, like boom, boom, like rapid fire right off the bat, but I don't know. I, It's not like a My Fair Lady sort of situation, you know, where, uh, or the whole ugly duckling sort of scenario, but uh, yeah, I didn't get enough of our team. I'm, I'm curious because I've watched a little bit of the second season and I'd, since it's been a few years now that originally broadcast in 2018, uh, I don't remember how much expansion we actually get. I do know that we flip-flopped from, you know, season two being about book three because they wanted to continue a certain story. Um, but yeah, they did do a couple beats, one in particular with regards to, uh, be besides the initial running over of the crowd, there is something uh, with hamburger meat that they do here, and damn is it effective and insanely disturbing, so I will I will most definitely give them, give them that for just really nailing that. Um, way more aggro Hodges, I, I mentioned that already. He is definitely a little, little cagier, a little more just disturbed, and I think exploring the past of his daughter and actually doing stuff with that, it kind of justifies that a little bit. Um, yeah, he's kind of a, he's kind of way more of an asshole to Jerome, which I didn't I didn't necessarily did not necessarily like. Um, I've already mentioned the the eighties punk rock and everything. Then like the fact that uh, Janie lives in nineteen C. I mean, that's the sort of stuff that like you can tell this was made with love and like just respect and affinity for not just the Hodges trilogy and the first book specifically. But um, yeah, I mean, there's just lots of fun little bits like that. There's there's a monologue in particular in episode five, without spoiling stuff, that I really wanted to mention. And it's where Todges is basically, he's having a moment, and he's talking to Jerome, and Jerome's like, what are you even doing out here? What happened, man? And he basically, he's like, I'm reflecting on being a fuck up, because that's what, you know, that, that's what we do. <laughs> the, you know, a fuck up is a status as well as a verb, and there's, there's profound moments like that, and just to, like even later in the show, underneath the skin and bones, some people just have black holes. That's really profound stuff, and there's a lot of great moments like that in this. Yes, am I just, I mean, did they expand upon characters and add some, like the neighbor, that I didn't really believe were necessary? Yes, they did. Did they kind of shortchange uh, Jerome and Holly, who are such just impaired apart. Yeah. And did they change the climax, at least as far as setting goes? There's no boy band, guys. Uh, and yet, I felt like it was less hammy, and it worked significantly better for our main showdown, at least as far as here in the first season, and as with relation to the first book. Um, yeah, Bra man, Brady has another scene in this where he's being interviewed for a promotion, and he has like this murder fantasy thing that he's going through while he's sitting in this restaurant talking to these like higher corporate execs from this electronic store that he works at. And it's graphic, like the show gets really graphic. Not consistently, but when it wants to, yeah, it goes for it, man. And so, you know, props to them. Um, I'm very excited to check out, you can check out the second season, but unfortunately it is that pay situation where you have to have the Peacock Premium, but once again, like I said, watch the freebies of the first season, and then if you want to, you know, check out the second, sign up for the trial or whatever, but gotta say, this is a, despite some of the flaws that I mentioned, Mr. Mercedes, the first season, I'm glad that I'm finally getting around to discussing it. Originally, upon the initial broadcast, uh, myself and MPH, Marsh Parker, we're going to be checking it out and uh, doing a review, but uh, she just had a second child, and I felt like this was definitely the time to actually give this show its proper due and its proper discussion. I mean, between the in just impeccably 
just near pitch perfect performances from Brendan Gleeson and Harry Treadway uh, <laughs> as our main two peeps in Brady and Bill Hodges. This show is highly recommended, even if I feel like some of the other casting was either misused, diminished, unnecessarily expanded upon, whatever, but it's a great looking show. It's very well acted and it hits some of the best beats from the uh, original source material, obviously, and also uh, does some interesting things that are just nice little twists for those who are fans of the source material. So, I've been Jaime Fuego. You can find more on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on the YouTube where I do have my own personal YouTube channel. It's called Infuegotainment. I just did a review of Borat subsequent movie film, which I've already watched twice. And first viewing, I was a little bit more ho hum because it's as opposed to like being more social commentary, it's like full on political commentary this time. Um, it's not gonna be for everybody, but uh, Sacha Baron Cohen is hilarious in it and major props to him. So if you would like to see a non scarific thing, you can definitely jump over and check that out. Um, a like, a share, a subscribe here definitely means a heck of a lot here. Uh, also a reminder, right over there, Salem's Lot, that is our book of the month. On the first Saturday of every new month, we do a live book of the month discussion here for Hail to Stephen King. So for the 45th anniversary, has it really been that long? God damn! Yeah, 45 years ago in October of 1975, his uh, amazing second novel was published. So if uh, you have the opportunity and the interest, I believe it's Saturday, November 6th, that we will be going live at 12 Pacific, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. So uh, yes, tune in if you get the chance. And obviously, uh, yeah, just tuning in here. It means a heck of a lot. And if you want further palaver, the Hail to Stephen King Facebook group. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm the sole admin and moderator over there and lots of great palaver amongst all kinds of different uh, noobs, constant readers, tower junkies, you name it. We are all across the board and on Fridays we freak out a little bit and we talk about pretty much anything under the sun, which is fun. So, I've been Fuego. Y'all have been rad status, badass awesomeness as per usual. And until the Wheel of Ka comes around once more, hasta luego, sin amigos, constant readers and viewers in this case alike. Say thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. Greatly appreciated. But I'm hopeful we share more of this palaver sooner rather than later. And until then, remember to stay scared and read Stephen King, obviously. If you haven't checked out the Hodges trilogy, it's fantastic. But uh, yes, Peacock TV your new destination for Mr. Mercedes.